welcome to everyone. We're so happy to have you here with us today. Thank you for taking the time to join us this morning or afternoon or evening, depending on where you're located. We'd love to hear from you in the chat if you'll let us know your name and where you're joining us from and what you think about what we're talking about um, at different times with likes, thumbs up, fire if you're feeling spicy. I see we have uh, Cecilia, we have Kim, Brenda, Leslie, we have Texas, we have Virginia, Massachusetts, people from Wisconsin. Thank you so much for joining us here today. We're so happy to have you. Um, you know, throughout, you can just go ahead and drop comments in the chat. Um, and while you will want to stay tuned for everything that we're going to be talking about today, because the content is so good, at the end of our time, you're going to really want to be here because we have a special giveaway planned just for you. And it's likely that if you're joining us today, you, like myself, your parents of adult children, and like me, you've probably spent your life pouring into these humans, making sure they're safe, they're loved, they're cared for. And after all of that, what do they do? They up and leave you. Well, or they haven't left you yet, and maybe, or maybe they have moved back in with you. So either way, the question is, what do you do now? If that's your question, it's good that you're here with us today. My name is Jenny Taylor, and I'm joined by the spectacular Bridget and Dion Benzel. And we Hi. all work. <clears throat> Hello. It's good to see you guys together. Thank you for joining us. We're looking forward to spending the next two days with you. Yeah. Yes. It's going to be a good time. We're looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say about that, about empty nesters and and being with adult children. And so for those of you who don't know, I'm Jenny Taylor, and this is Dion and Bridget Van Zell, and we all work with Graham Cook at Brilliant Perspectives. Um, I'm the lead of our online discipleship course. Dion is the president of the company, and Bridget oversees the parenting community as well as our empty nester community. Mm -hmm. So Dion and Bridget have four grown children, and all four of them are so different. They have varying personalities. And if you have met their children or spent any time with their family, you would know instantly what qualifies them to lead this topic and this community. They have a wealth of knowledge in this area. So Dion, Bridget, how are you guys doing today? What are you looking forward to in our time together? Oh, I'm doing well, thank you. I'm looking forward to spending time with everybody and really hoping that we can bring encouragement and hope to people in the situation that they're in at the moment. Yeah, we're really excited. What an honor to hang out with you guys, spend some time over the next three days together. Uh, we're really trusting the Lord for a real transformation of our hearts and of our thinking. So thank you so much for joining us. This is exciting. We've waited many years to be able to put this course together. We've done a lot of parenting, marriage. But we're really excited for addressing this very unique group, probably one of the most exciting and powerful opportunities to redesign your life in God. So we're really excited. Thanks, Jenny. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, so as you guys heard, we, the three of us, we work here uh, with Graham Cook and Brilliant Perspectives, and we actually have a message from Graham, who has known and walked with Dion and Bridget and their family for years. So we're going to take a few minutes and hear from Graham. One of my favorite endeavors is considering how we can better serve our brilliant community. We've discovered a good portion of our community are working through the journey of life after kids and are experiencing challenges and exciting possibilities unique to this season of life. We're excited about launching this new focus for this reason. God has a special purpose for empty nesters. Many in the brilliant team have shared the journey of an empty nester. We've discovered hills and valleys, triumphs and challenges. And we can say from experience, these are each more navigable with a friend. And they can be an absolute joy with Jesus as our guide. 
in the kingdom, we're all learning how to see things properly, thinking about them positively, and learning the language of possibility so that we learn to grow upward in our lifestyle. This season is a time to discover possibilities in God as yet unseen. A time to discover a deeper understanding of purpose and enjoy a rising confidence in Jesus. It's for this reason we at Team Brilliant are excited to launch this new program, especially crafted for empty nesters. Whether you're facing this time as a single person or with a spouse, these sessions are designed to equip you for success in relating to adult kids, even boomerang kids. <laughs> How to properly help adult children in crisis is a focus. How to exchange feelings of regret and resentment for possibility in Jesus. How to pray crafted prayers for your kids that actually get answered. And how to leave an impactful kingdom legacy. It's a privilege for BP to be part of this project, which is overseen by Bridget and Dion, who have our full support. It's a joy for us to invest in and support the ongoing development of this program at the highest possible level. Personally, I've had the privilege of walking with Bridget and Dion for a number of years. They each show evidence of transformation in their own lives powerfully. Dion's ability to father and lead was a prime reason for inviting him to serve as president of Brilliant Perspectives. Like Dion, Bridget is a sought-after person in industry for her leadership, organizational, and people skills. They make a fine team in life, ministry, and home building. Each member of this team has both personal and professional credentials that qualify them to lead this new program. Each has at least 20 years of following teaching here at Brilliant. They believe in using sound principles in building, nurturing, and developing the key people in their lives. Nowhere is that more evident than in their family and in the homes of their adult children and their spouses. I've spent time with their children in their family setting and in a business environment. They are kind, loving, gentle, powerful, and fun to be around. They are open, honest, respectful, humble, and delightful. Bridget and Dion have made excellent business partners in Brilliant Perspectives, so I'm already deeply impressed by them. They are builders who know how to bless, free thinkers who explore life without fear, people who can trust God because they learned how to trust the people that God gave them to. The key people in our lives make an imprint for good or otherwise. The formative ideas and principles that you learn from Bridget and Dion will stay with you for life and chart the way forward for you. I know this to be true. I've seen it in the Van Zell family and also in my business. So join Team Brilliant for discussions and a discipleship process that will reinvigorate your dreams. God has a special purpose for empty nesters. You are good soil. I encourage you to invest in yourself and your growth in the Lord. How might your life look differently if lived from a place of purpose, peace, and passion? 
We have designed this to be a safe place for you to process your growth in Jesus and to align yourself with what Jesus is redeeming in you right now. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me, share my heart with you about our new program. I appreciate it. And I hope you will consider joining us in this exciting new venture with the three. That was really good. Wow. That's very kind. (laughs) Three things stuck out to me. I mean, the whole thing was good. But possibilities in God, yet unseen, we're going to be equipped for success in this time and that we get to live from purpose, peace, and passion. That right there is, um, that's something to get excited about. Yeah, and, yeah, sure. It is, isn't it? And so thank you, Graham. It's good from, to hear from you and um, to hear your heart on this topic and your heart for Bridget and beyond. And with that, we are going to hand it over to you, Bridget, to go ahead and get us started in learning how to see the possibilities in God yet unseen. Great. Thank you so much, Graham. That was very kind of you. And uh, we are so excited to be on this journey with you. So I think the the shocking part of being coming an empty nester is there's just no preparation for the season. You know, when you're when you get engaged, you have the engagement party. You have all the wonderful preparation for getting married. You have the bridal showers. You have the pre-marriage counseling with the pastor. Then you have the wedding, the honeymoon, and then perhaps you start a family and you go through the baby shower. You have your monthly doctor appointments and you have lots of advice from friends. You read as much as you can. The baby comes home. Everybody's there to help you with meals. Then your kids go to to school and uh, you have the parent orientations for your first day for kindergarten. Perhaps you have parent orientation for middle school and then high school, and then it all stops. Nobody prepares you for that season, and nobody brings you a casserole when your kids go to college. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and uh, it's just you find yourself in this void. You Perhaps you become very lonely, and uh, it's just nobody prepares you for that. The teachers are not there to help you. Your friends are maybe going through their own challenges, so nobody prepares you for that. Um, the Mayo Clinic has actually coined the phrase empty nest syndrome. So it's not a clinical diagnosis, but it's a very real syndrome that they are finding more and more where people are coming to them with depression, anxiety, a lot of sometimes weight gain and sometimes weight loss. But um, it's a very real syndrome. So um, I think that's what we really feel very convicted to come alongside the group and bring hope into a difficult season. So in these next three days and in our um, our course moving forward, we don't want to focus on the past. We want to focus on the present and the future, which is a bright future because we have this with Jesus. And uh, so we're going to refer to the past as some maybe the baggage that you have maybe been carrying up until this point. And uh, what we don't we don't want to unpack that. We want to recognize it and we fully understand there's some very difficult seasons that some people are in. But we want to help you pack your luggage. And this is what we where we are now and where we're going to be moving forward to. So in the next few days, we want to give you some keys to put into your luggage. And these we're hoping will be tools that can give you hope and encouragement and come alongside you and, and give you practical ways that you can unpack that. So the reality of being um, in this situation is that there is pain. For maybe some of you, you have regrets. You you know you made mistakes. Perhaps you didn't bring up the, the children in the way you'd want them to. Maybe they you were not walking with the Lord when your children were younger, so you didn't bring them up in the ways of the Lord. You are not feeling needed anymore. And especially for moms who are often the primary caregiver, they're just feeling like there's nothing for them to do anymore. And as one of my friends said, if I'm not a mom, who am I? That's, that's a real question we keep asking. And uh, for in our marriage, sometimes you're just feeling like you've drifted apart. You've been so busy focusing on the children. And as Jenny said, we invest so much into our children. And obviously, we love our children and we, we will do anything for them. 
but sometimes people have not spent enough time on just um, nurturing their marriage and continuing to build their friendship with their spouse. For men uh, and women, perhaps you're in the um, pinnacle of your career and you haven't quite got to the point where you wanted to. Maybe you realize you didn't get the promotion that you wanted and maybe uh, you just wished you hadn't spent quite so much time on your career and uh, spend more time with your children. So obviously lots of regrets and disappointments. And then you find that perhaps your kids are not actually ready to be independent financially. So you're still carrying a lot of that on your payroll. And uh, then to add to that, you're looking after aging parents. You're having those tough conversations with your parents about perhaps moving from the home that they've been in for so many years into assisted living. Um, horrible conversations of taking your parents' driver's license away if they're not safe to drive anymore. Maybe your parents are moving back in with you. And um, that also comes with a lot of challenge. And then you may be having strain with your kids. Kids, Maybe you're not even talking to some of your kids. Maybe they've left the Lord. Maybe you've had a, a really bad argument with them and they don't want to be part of your home. Perhaps they've made some life choices that you don't agree with and that has created a void in your relationship with them. And then parents are often trying to parent from the past and that we need to end that style of parenting because when you're moving forward, that's a very different relationship you're going to have with your adult kids. And that's what we're going to be discussing tomorrow, the whole practical way of how do you relate to your adult kids. Mm -hmm. Then um, another area that some people are perhaps battling with is the challenge of blended families. And I know this can be challenging. Now you're dealing with kids that you didn't even raise when they were younger, and now you have to parent them, you have to do the transition and those can be very challenging and complicated. So this is a reality of empty nest, and we don't want to undermine the pain that you're going through. Yes, it is a challenging time, but with the Lord, this can be the best season yet. So remember, it is never too late to experience his healing, his redemption, and to enjoy his full power in the season with Jesus. Well, you know, as we think about being empty nesters, <clears throat> I mean, one of the things for us is we want to recognize the pain. And Bridget just listed 12 things, the you know, that empty nesters mm -hmm. are going through. Um, but here's the real challenge is that, you know, the definition of your family and of yourself mm -hmm. that got you here will not get you where you need to go. In other words, we have to create an expanded or a larger space in our hearts and in our thinking. And that's what we plan to do over the next three days together. So we need a new mode, a new mode that creates new space. And because the old mode, uh, we've seen a lot of empty nesters make the mistake of using the old definition of family, you know, how we do vacations, where we go, how we think and so on. Um, and we realize that if you intentionally take a moment mm -hmm. and together, if you have a spouse or if you're doing this as a single person, to redefine what family is and who you are and your own identity, it's a wonderful opportunity. It's a very natural stage of life to do this kind of upgrade. Mm. But if we don't do this, problems will continue to compound because you can't think, you can't sort of think old and then expect mm. new. So we have to, you have to find this bigger place in yourself with the Lord, find a bigger place and create a bigger place for your family. Give your children space to become families in their own right. And the, so what we're going to talk through the, today, especially, is as you fix your heart on the Lord, your mind will gain new space. Yes. So if your frame for your family is too small, then it needs a new definition. Mm -hmm. And often a lot of the conflicts that we run into, like, hey, why is everybody not coming to Thanksgiving dinner? Uh, you know, you should all be here at Christmas. And all these old family traditions, older, brought you here and they were wonderful. But now you need new thinking and to expand your thinking. Mm -hmm. But the good news is that with the Lord, every problem comes with new possibility. Mm -hmm. If you've been around brilliant any mm -hmm. length of time, you know that's what we always do. We always look at the problem and then flip it into the possibility because that's how the kingdom works. That's how God thinks. Mm -hmm. In fact, you can kind of think of like, you know, where your pain is, X marks the spot of your next upgrade. Yes. So that's why you're on this challenge, mm -hmm. is to find a new definition that mm -hmm. creates new space and leads to a whole new level of peace, not just for you 
and for your spouse, but for your kids mm. and, uh, and a, a peace about your future and about your purpose in the Lord. So we want to help you over the next three days, redefine your relationship with, your, with yourself, with the Lord, with your spouse, and with your kids. So that's a, a pretty tall order. Yes. But what we have awesome. noticed over time is that having been doing this for a number of years is that there are keys that we can use. And mm -hmm. so we've reduced it down to three keys. We want to share with you one each day. And today we want to, you know, we're going to get into the first key here in a second, but we want to encourage you mm -hmm. and say, this is not about what you've done wrong. This is not looking back as Bridget said and unpacking your baggage. It's about forgiving yourself, finding freedom in Jesus, mm -hmm. and then moving forward mm -hmm. so that we can be truly uh, present future. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to spending this time with you. And um, over to you, Jenny. Yes. yes. We're getting a lot of great responses in the chat. People saying, yes, I want the new. This is so true. I need this. I'm looking forward to this. Love that. Every problem comes with a new possibility. And you guys talk like this, like you've been through it a few times. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to diving into these keys. Um, for you folks, Bridget went through a list of 12 things that empty nesters um, can, can experience. And for me, three to four, I'm sure all of them at some level apply to me. And three to four just really stuck out at me. Um, like, I really want to know what the key is for those. And so we'd love to hear from you. We're going to put um, put the 12 points in the chat. If you guys will just pick, you don't have to name them out, but if there's three that apply to you, four that apply to you, maybe 24 because you added your own, please put that number in the chat and let us know how many of those points um, apply to you. Mm -hmm. And so while we're letting you guys go ahead and have some time to do that, um, Dion, there yeah. is a solution for this. Yeah, there is a solution. In mm. God, there's always possibility. Yeah. So, you know, you've seen that list of 12. I see um, that kind of came out as a single block, but, you know, mm. makes the point, right? There's a lot of challenge at this time for people, you know, at this stage of life, which we're at ourselves, by the way. Mm. So, you know, obviously in the next three days, we can't address all 12 mm. items. But what we have found is that the fastest way to learn is through immersion. So mm -hmm. to help us with that, we've created a 90-day immersion solution. That means uh, every single week for 12 weeks, um, in fact, the first one will actually start this Sunday. It'll be a bonus session, and they will run for 12 weeks full immersion to help us shift our hearts and minds from one place to another. Mm -hmm. We found that if we don't do this sort of as an intensive immersive experience think of it like learning a new language mm. so let's say you wanted to learn to speak french and i taught you one phrase every month right that wouldn't be very helpful at all you mm. certainly wouldn't be fluent mm. and if you did it would take an extraordinarily long time so what we want to do is create a community because we all know we learn better we function better when there's accountability and we do it together yeah. so we're going to do this 90-day immersion now for some people who say i can't, can't afford to do the full 90-day thing mm -hmm. we're going to do the four first four keys in 30 days so it's a 30-day version and then those who stay on for the other two months makes it 90 days so 30 days 90 days now for some we say man i just need the i just need the keys mm -hmm. i'm the diy person and so if you're the DIY person, we are going to give you uh, these keys so that you literally can do it yourself. But if you do want to join us, we're going to, on Friday, make an offer so that you can do exactly that. So we've really thought about how do we ju don't just talk about it, how do we get past just talking and telling you what you ought to do, but rather help you become it. What if we can help you become this person and step into mm. this new possibility as a permanent place what if we can create that new space and then invade it so to do that we're going to need the 90-day program so i hope that makes sense we, we hope many of you will join us yes yes and we have people um checking in and saying that you know uh three to four seems to be the average um, for people that are really identifying with the points on the list. And so the solutions that you offer, Dion, 
that's really helpful. And I'm looking forward to those. Yeah. In this next segment, um, we're going to provide keys that can address several of these challenges for you guys. You're saying, what am I going to do? Well, mm -hmm. we're going to um, provide you some keys. And the goal for the next three days is creating a new space for this new season with new thinking, new heart posture, and new vision. And so with that, I'm uh, Bridget, key one, we're going to dive in. Sure. So the first key, the first tool that we're going to give you to put into your new luggage is your identity in Christ. It always goes back to Christ. That's our foundation. We don't want to come up with worldly psychology, although there's a place in time where there's some good um, advice that you can get from there. But in, in our focus and in our kingdom thinking, it's all around your identity in Christ and who he made you to be, um, what is the words that he speaks over you, what was your, in, your the definition that he has for you in heaven. And although your circumstances may have changed, that definition and your identity in Christ never, ever changes. Amen. And so we're going to start with today and move forward. So this is a new season and um, we're going to drop the baggage from the past and you need to forgive yourself. We've all made mistakes. It's all, all have regrets. Jesus has forgiven you. So you need to forgive yourself. He's not holding anything against you. So let's start together with a new season. And today we'll start with a fresh new lens of how does Christ see us? That is so good. I mean, really, this challenge is about identity. If you mm -hmm. think about what we're talking about, we want to establish this key thing in you, that mm -hmm. you are in Christ and Christ is in you. It's an interesting question to ask, why did the Father put Christ in you? What was the purpose of that? Mm -hmm. Or why did the Father put you in Christ? So we mm -hmm. want to step into this because in the answering that question, we really get to the heart of it because this is our starting point for identity you see you have a new nature in christ so identity is not you trying to figure out the best version of yourself mm -hmm. that should be good news um, because the old you died and was buried with christ when he died you died and when he was raised you were raised with him mm -hmm. he didn't raise the old you that stayed in the grave mm -hmm. praise god the Bible puts it this way. The old man was crucified with Christ. That's why God gives you the ultimate permission. He says to you, consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God. That's Romans 6, 11. So this is the part that we're really talking about, this last part, being alive to God part. Dead to sin, alive to God. We're going to focus on being alive to God. When you gave your life to Christ, you received a new nature. Mm -hmm. This is the new you. The rest of scripture is about teaching you to walk in that new nature. This is what the Bible calls being transformed into the image of Christ. That's what it means. So how do you walk in this new nature of yours? To answer this, we need to understand how the kingdom works. Because everything in the kingdom starts with a gift including salvation. Jesus was a gift. We all know the verse that says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, John 3, 16. So Christ is a gift. And from that starting point, your old nature was dealt with at the cross, set aside, and your new nature was created in Christ. So this is what we're talking about today. It's not time to create a new identity or define identity out of our own thinking and our own imagination, but to find the upgraded version or not even to find an upgraded version of our old identity. What we're really doing is discovering that identity that Christ created in you. It is his nature in you. This is the real you. It is the deepest part of who you really are. You may be thinking, well, what is my new nature like? Well, think of the fruit of the Spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. This is Jesus' nature in you. This is not something that you strive to get. He lives in you. 
you and Jesus are one. In the same way that Jesus walked with the Father is the same way you can now walk with the Father. Whatever attributes belong to Jesus now belong to you because you and Jesus are one. It's like a husband and wife, mm. right? They share everything because in this marriage with God, you inherit everything from him. You in inherit all his stuff, including his nature in you. There's a fascinating verse in 1 John 4, 17 that says, as he is, speaking of Jesus, so are we in this world. So the key to understanding this new identity is that you have to start with you are a much loved son or daughter. Mm. He calls us his beloved. Mm. This is so beautiful. So Jesus didn't just come to die for our sin and affect that transaction. As critical as that component is, he gave you so much more. He gave you a way to be with God. Mm. This is your new identity. What you think about God and what you think about the status of your relationship with him will determine how you relate to him and how you think he relates to you. If you think your status with him still needs to be fixed, then you'll keep trying to fix it. But if Jesus already fixed it, once and for all at the cross, then that puts you in a whole different space. Mm. That's amazing. I mean, maybe we can get some, some response there. So give us some love, you know, on behalf <laughs> of the Lord, right? Because that's a fantastic thing. I do not have to fix my relationship mm. with Jesus. My relationship with Jesus is secured. So now what does he do? He invites you to confidently step into this new identity mm. and become like him. Jesus gave you a way to, into a secure relationship with the Father. This is what the Bible calls the new covenant, and this is what makes it perfect. Mm. Did you notice you are not involved in that agreement? It's between Jesus Amen. and the Father, but you get to be the full beneficiary of it. Amazing. But that's what grace means. You get everything Jesus deserves. Some people say, well, I don't deserve. Yeah, but Jesus deserves. What if Jesus deserves everything he paid for? So your behavior doesn't weigh into your standing in God. I'm not saying there are no consequences. I'm just saying your behavior doesn't weigh into your standing with God because you're standing in Christ. And that does not change. Your mistakes, your regret with your kids, uh, your regrets on spending too much time maybe on your career, maybe some of the bad decisions you feel you've made, all that stuff is not the driving force mm -hmm. of your position in God. You see, you're in Christ, and that is the foundational starting point. Mm -hmm. This is a safe and restful place. Amen. So that sort of is step one. You're in Christ. Let me share three quick steps with you that go alongside that. Step two, God does not change. He's bearing towards you. His posture towards you is the same posture he has mm. towards Jesus. Oh. He does not change. And your behavior cannot change him or cause him to change. Mm. Trust me, you're not that good and neither am I. Mm. How you have been as a parent or as a husband or wife does not determine your standing in mm. Christ. Jesus does. That's amazing news. That is so free. Step number three, he makes all things new. Amen. The Bible says you are a new creation. Everything becomes new. Mm -hmm. You're gaining a new definition of who you are in Christ. And in this process, your life is being made new. He's going to make your family new. He's, he's renewing your purpose and he's renewing who you think you are and how you think he sees you. This is what the whole renewal process is about, to get us off that performance treadmill and step into a place of rest where we are fully accepted in the beloved. 
So you're coming into this new stage of being an empty nester. Believe that God is making all things new. He wants to walk with you in this renewal process. It's all about the relationship to him. That's why <coughs> it's brilliant. We refer to relational learning because it's as we learn in our hearts, not just in our heads, but as we learn in our hearts how to be with the Lord, we change. Mm -hmm. So now you cannot look at what was. You cannot, you know, as Bridget referred to it as the baggage, you cannot say, well, it's always been like this. We've always done it this way. Because your past does not define your future in the Lord. Your new nature desires to learn his ways instead, not your past ways. You're going to change your past ways for his new ways. So this defines your future and it defines that God, who God's going to be for you, who he's going to be for your spouse, who he's going to be for your kids. And even if your kids are not working with him, uh, he's still, he still. If your kids are not walk, working with walking with him, I apologize. He's still walking with them. I hope that's encouraging to yes. you. Right. So, what does this all mean? Today, you can be released from the old definition of yourself mm -hmm. Amen. and discover your true identity in Christ. This is the truest you, mm -hmm. the real you. Today is a fresh start, a fresh starting point for you, for your marriage, for your relationship with your kids, and for your calling with, with God. So you have to let go of the old and step into the new. You have to let go, you have to let go of what's in your hand so that you can receive what's in his hand. Amen. You cannot think old. And expect new. So the Bible calls this process of changing, of letting go of the old and taking on the new. The Bible calls this renewing your mind. Mm -hmm. So you might think, well, how often do I have to do that? And that leads us to our last step. In Lamentations 3.22, there is this stunning verse. It says, the Lord's acts of mercy indeed do not end. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> For his compassions do not fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. That just blesses me. Mm, his mercies are new every morning. What does that mean? That means every morning when you wake up, it's a new day from his perspective. And you get a fresh start. Mm. Because part of God's faithfulness to you is to give you mercy every morning so that you can leave all the negatives of yesterday behind you mm. and you have permission, special grace from the father to do that every single day. Is that not gorgeous? Mm. So the mm. negative of your past, bad family experiences, your family's baggage, other issues, all that stuff doesn't come into today because every morning his mercies are new and they are fresh. You get a fresh start every day. Now, this is not good news for the enemy. Imagine how frustrating that must be. He builds up things in your life, and every morning you just start as though he's done nothing. Mm -hmm. But if, although this might be massively annoying to the enemy, it should be massively freeing to you. Yeah. Day after day after day, morning after morning after morning, yes. you start fresh every day single day this is a powerful key that will set you free yesterday's negatives do not have to be carried into today god gives you permission to leave that in yesterday drop the baggage and mm. pack your luggage to move into today and into your future so let's combine these four steps mm. to create a powerful launch pad for you to step into the fullness of this new identity in christ so we want to be clear about four facts. One, you are in Christ, and that is the truest self to be found. Amen. Two, God doesn't change. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Number three, he makes all things new, and he is redeeming you every day for the rest of your life. Mm. And four, you have permission and special grace to start each 
day fresh. These four pillars really do set you up to discover your true identity and what God is really, really like. Because he is love and joy and peace, patience and kindness. This means that your new nature has these same components too. Since Christ is in you, as he is, mm -hmm. so are you. This means that you have the same nature. Mm -hmm. So as an example, you cannot say, I'm not a patient person. That's the old person speaking. The, the old person was never patient, but good news is that old person is dead. Yeah. Christ is patient, and as he is, so am I, so I am patient. Yes. Mm. The new you is patient, and you get to practice that patience until it becomes permanently part of your life. Yeah. It's the same with peace. We don't just have a once-off connection with peace when we're under stress. Mm. The place of peace is permanent peace that mm. comes to live with us, regardless of our circumstances, to live in the kind of peace. Jesus said, I give you peace, not like the world does. Mm. How does the world give peace? When everything's going great, you can feel peaceful. Jesus' peace is permanent because the Prince of Peace lives in you. Amen. The command in the scripture not to try to create the feelings of peacefulness, but in fact, the Lord gives us permission and says, let the peace of Christ reign in you. Your job is to let. Whose peace, not yours? His peace. You see, his nature is already in you. Mm. It's not something we're trying to get from the outside in because the kingdom's in you. The Prince of Peace lives in you. It's just le us learning to practice that new nature. Mm. So now we can apply this new identity to every fruit of the Spirit. Now, as I read this list again of the fruit of the Spirit, maybe you want to take a moment, close your eyes, and listen mm. As I describe your new nature to you, you are the following. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Let me ask you, which one of these is God focusing with you right now? So this is your new identity. We get to start a new way of being with the Father a new way with our spouse, a new way of being with our kids, and a new way of walking in our purpose. Mm, I hope you enjoyed that. Process. Yes. Yeah, that's so good and so encouraging. And I, feel, I just sense that there's an invitation from the Lord that this is a new journey he wants you to go on. So, you know, it feel, feels like maybe somebody's inviting you to go on a cruise and they give you a list of things that they want you to pack. But you keep wanting to bring these heavy burdens in the suitcase that mm. there's no room for that. And what the Lord wants you to do is take you on this wonderful, all, all paid for event, wonderful, all inclusive vacation. And the, the invitation is to just put things in that he wants you to put in there, put mm. peace in there, put joy, and just don't let the enemy try and sneak those things in there that have been weighing you down for so long. Yeah. Now, I love the way Graham puts it. He says, we, we don't have a sin nature, just a sin habit, habit yeah. and habits can change. Mm -hmm. And that should be super good news. You know, we're not trying to ward off the flesh. We're not trying to deal with the old nature. Jesus mm -hmm. dealt with that. Mm -hmm. What we get to do is step into our new nature. Absolutely. And that's right. why God is never working on a negative, as no. Bridget said. That's why we're our whole stress here. For you to get a fresh start, is you yeah. have to start with God only starts with a positive. Does it always begin with a positive. Yeah. Yeah. He's not dealing with our anxiety. He's dealing with our peace, sure. right? We get to let peace reign. Mm -hmm. So we know he's not, he's not dealing with, you know, our fear. He's te teaching us that we're perfectly loved because love casts out, perfect love casts mm -hmm. out fear. Mm -hmm. So God always starts with the positive. Yeah. And the, you can't start with a negative and end up in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So that's the way of the kingdom. It's yeah. absolutely beautiful mm -hmm. because all the work, is done, yeah. and you've been secured. You know mm -hmm. why? Because the contract, the mm -hmm. agreement, the covenant is between Jesus and the Father. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you and I are not involved. Sure. So this isn't can't a, be messed up. This isn't a season of problems. This is a wonderful season of possibilities. Yeah, absolutely. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for listening. Yeah. You guys, that was so good. That was really good. I really appreciate how, Bridget, you started with we want to acknowledge, we want to recognize, but we don't want to impact, yeah. uh, impact those because you're getting so much more to pack your luggage in so you don't have to take the baggage. And that's yeah. 
so freeing and gives so much permission to leave the old in the past, right? Yeah. And to start new. Mm -hmm. And because our identity is in Christ, yeah. Amen. you get everything that Jesus deserves. You mm -hmm. cannot fall blind below the line of that privilege, right? Yes. So any indicator, anything that tries to come up and say, man, you could have done this better with your kids. You could have done that, or you should have done that. <clears throat> you get to say, no, no, I get what Jesus deserves. I love joy, peace, patience, kindness. You just take it and you flip it. And it yeah. really is that simple. And that's what Dion and Bridget are saying in this is you just take it and you flip it and you get so empowered in this yeah. new time of your life and to walk in it powerfully. That's and so good, Jenny. Sorry, I don't want to, so I, I love what you're just saying. You know, we were just thinking the other day, we, uh, you know, we moved into a, a, another home mm -hmm. and uh, we would like to be like super organized, everything's labeled, you know, and um, I don't know what happened, but maybe in the last hour, the moving crew got tired or something and they dumped everything in the living room or like up to our shoulders in boxes. That shouldn't have happened. So the interesting, I thought about this as a great analogy for many of us because mm. the room lost its purpose mm. when it started. Mm. And we had to get everything out of there that didn't belong mm. there exactly. so yeah. that it could resume its original mm. purpose. It couldn't be a living room. Well, as, Bridget, as you always say so well, is that if you're, a, if you're an apple tree but there's no apples, it doesn't change your DNA. You're still an apple tree. It doesn't matter about whether there's fruit or not. You're inherently, as you were created and designed, that's who you are. So I love what you were saying about this. And I think for most people, we're wanting to give them today. We're going to give permission. Yes. To let go of the baggage, mm. to forgive yourself, step into your new nature, mm. and then get with the Father. Because this preps you up for what we're going to do over the next few yeah. days and few months, actually. Yeah. yeah. And cool. As Dion said, when we had to um, move those boxes out of that room, it was intentional planning. We didn't just throw them all out of there. We had to say, okay, where does this go? And so we got our purpose back for our room. And so that's what maybe some of you are doing today. Maybe there's some intentional mm -hmm. That you need to do and repositioning of things that have taken the wrong focus in your life at the moment. Yeah, very good. That's really good to reposition. Yeah, things that have taken the wrong focus in your life. That's really good, and to to bring that focus back. Mm. To yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Sure. Yeah, sure. thank you. So good. And people, folks have said the the new mercies. Every, his mercies are new every morning. That really hit home with a lot of people here in the chats, that his mercies are new every Amen. morning. And I wonder what would happen if they woke up and said, today, this day, your mercies are new to me this morning. There's a hilarious part to this, right, Jenny? And imagine yeah. you're the enemy I, and, and the enemy working on you yeah. for like years mm -hmm. trying to get this thing to work. And suddenly you learn this, this, mm -hmm. this truth. Right. And it's gone. It's like Jenga blocks. You know, you build up all the Jenga blocks and then you pull the block out at the bottom and it all collapses. Yeah. <laughs> this must be the most annoying thing ever. Yeah. Just start all over again. And he doesn't have unlimited resources. Sure. I just think it's an hilarious thought sure. yeah, because we always amazing. see the enemy as somehow, you know, super powerful. But he was conquered yeah. at the cross. Sure. Yeah. And for some of you, perhaps you're going through such a difficult time that it's not enough to do it every day. You may have to do this every hour. I've right. walked, walked that uh, journey with a, with a neighbor who had lost her husband, and uh, she said, I can't wait till tomorrow morning to renew it. I have to renew it every hour. <laughs> so it is tough. And so we're not, we're not undermining this. I know it's a challenge, but the Lord is stronger than your problems. Very good. Um, such an excellent point. Every hour if needed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, and to help with that, um, here at Brilliant, we, we love crafted prayers. And we've crafted a prayer for you in this time. And the beautiful thing about a crafted prayer is, is that it bonds your heart with God's to create faith, expectation, and trust. And guys, you get to pray this every day or as many times per day as you like. So I'm going to take a moment and read this crafted prayer out for you. And you don't have to worry about writing it down because we'll provide it for you in the workbook that you're going to get. Um, so you can just open your heart and listen. Father, thank you for this wonderful time of upgrade and reinvention. Thank you 
that I am getting bigger and more confident in my identity in Jesus. In this season with you, I look forward to discovering some wonderful freedoms as my destiny develops and as I am creating a legacy in this powerful new stage of life. Thank you that your plans for me create space for me to move into a higher perspective of kingdom, wisdom, power, and favor. Thank you for your kind intentions towards me in this stage of my life and always. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Wow, Jenny, that was beautiful. Love that prayer. Love so encouraging. That prayer. That's good. I love crafted prayers. They just have the ability to, like I said, just to bond your heart with God's and to shift that mindset like yeah. you guys were talking about. So as we're beginning to wrap up today, I'd love uh, to get some closing comments from you guys about today. Okay. Yeah, well, we're really excited to do this this next few days with you and hopefully you'll journey with us further along. And we want you to leave feeling in, enthusiastic and encouraged. And if you're having any feelings of heaviness or frustration, you know that's not from the Lord. That is from the enemy. Obviously, he's going to be threatened because you're about to undo all these Jenga blocks, as, as Dale was saying. So, you know, keep your focus positive. Keep it. Keep a mindset of the Lord's lens of how he is seeing the situation for you at the moment. You know, today was really an important key because it set us up to create a bigger space in our heart mm -hmm. and step into our true identity in Jesus, which, you know, God's already done all the work. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now we get to partner with him and step into that newness. Mm -hmm. I know we've given some homework, and Jenny will get into that in a second, but I really encourage you to do the homework mm -hmm. that she walks you through in a moment. And the reason for that is we want you to get the full benefit of mm -hmm. these three days together. Mm -hmm. And we want to do more then just talk about stuff. What we want to do is hopefully bring life-changing yeah. truth. That, okay. that isn't some theoretical, you know, theological sermon, but what it is, these are truths we've learned to walk mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we recently went through a couple of years ago some, some very brutal business things. And, you know, and even though I've been, we've been pastors and in the ministry for over 35 years and all that, uh, ordained and so forth, in the whole process, it was shocking to realize that we didn't live in peace. Mm. We only went to walk for peace when we needed it. Mm. And in the last few years, to learn to walk in peace, regardless of circumstances, to walk in our new nature, mm. to be in joy, even when the circumstances in life weren't joyful, that was just an extraordinary transformation for us. So what we're saying to you is something we've learned Mm -hmm. shamefully very recently as empty nesters so mm -hmm. for some of you as empty nesters maybe you're just starting to learn this and that's okay because mm -hmm. god is a redeemer and he'll make up all the previous years so i'm excited about today what we've done and what we're going to do tomorrow when we talk about relating to em adult, uh, adult children yeah we're going to be try try and be as practical as possible and give you some real helpful tools moving forward with your children exactly this is really good uh, folks are saying in the chat, just to let you know that um, they're really loving what you guys are talking about. It's so necessary. It's so needed. There's not a lot. Um, I don't know of anybody else who's talking about the empty nesters mm -hmm. and what I'm taking away from today. And I'd love to hear from folks um, in the chat what you are taking away from today. Um, my, what I'm taking away from today is just powerfully like powerfully stepping into the space that is that has been made for me to step into as an empty nester. Mm -hmm. And part of that is that we have homework, you guys. I haven't had homework in years and years and years. Since kids were out of school, I haven't had homework. But I'm looking forward to this because I myself am included because I'm in it with you guys and learning right along with you from Dion and Bridget. Um, and there's a workbook that you're all gonna receive. So for tomorrow, we're going to complete key number one. And this is an exercise that's designed to open up a broader space in your heart and your mind. And we talked about space today and stepping into that space. So that's gonna help you with that. And we're gonna complete key number one of the workbook tonight in preparation for tomorrow. So for now, we're so excited. We're gonna move on now to um, to the giveaway. Thank you so much for joining us today. And today we're going to give away a special audio teaching uh, from Graham 
uh, called Living Your Truest Identity. And this is such a great teaching. It's one of my favorites. Um, it just hits on a lot of what Dion talked uh, today about. Because you guys, you know that the Father put you into Jesus so that he could love you in exactly the same way that he loves Jesus, right? Yeah. It's because you are the beloved of God. This is who you are. This teaching, um, this teaching, Living Your Truest Identity, will help you learn to see yourself, your circumstances, and your relationship with God in the same way that he sees it, and to live as one who is much love. And you are going to enjoy it for sure, and you'll enjoy it many, many times over. And so as we're, we hope that you enjoy that and you guys can find that in your emails. They're going to be sent to your emails. Uh, check to, excuse me, check your emails to see if you've won. So um, Bridget and Dion, this is so, I'm just so excited for right. tomorrow and day three and yeah. excited to do the homework and to dive in. Right. That's excellent. I love that we do the giveaway parts. It's yeah. like, I love being generous. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've done a lot of these channels. I don't know how many we've done, what, 28 of these or whatever it is. Brilliant. It's been a, yeah. a brilliant overall, different teams, mostly Graham and somebody. <laughs> um, right. But we, we, you know, we've brought, broadened that out to a, sure. a whole much bigger team. Mm -hmm. But we love these because we get to bless people. We get to be generous. And uh, I love the scriptures, be generous on every occasion. So this is our occasion to be yes. generous back to I you. So yeah. for the winners, I hope you really enjoy that as mm. you check your email. Yeah, sure. that's exciting. Did you want to? Yeah. So instead of seeing the season as a season of problems and, and challenges, you truly can step into this wonderful possibilities and soar above the empty nest and enjoy all the freedom that the Lord has for you. Yeah. I love that title, okay. Soaring yeah. Above yes. the Empty Yes, that's such a great title. My wife's a genius, and I'm married to her, so I think I should get points. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely do. You definitely do. Uh, as as we're um, closing out for today, uh, yeah. there is, I'm, I'm not going to try to pronounce the name, so my apologies, but someone said, I'm taking on the first tool into my new luggage, which is my new identity. Yeah, yeah. that? Perfect. That's great, yeah. That's encouraging. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. Bridget and Dion, thank you so much for joining us here today. We're looking forward to tomorrow. We're going to go home and complete our homework tonight, yeah. and we're going to show up prepared and ready tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Thank, thank you, Jenny. You so that was so much fun. Thanks for really joining us. What a, yeah. what a joy to hang out with you guys. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. We'll